Mr. Hervish, what do you think are the main challenges to achieve universal energy access and what is the role that international development institutions like OFID can play to achieve this noble objective? Well, the main uh, challenge is, of course, is that uh, as we are talking now, we have 1.3 billion people in uh, developing countries deprived from electricity and uh, that, you know, this problem is going to actually to be aggravated in the future because you have the population are increasing, especially in these uh, areas of the world, in Africa and Asia. And it doesn't really seem until today that there will be a, a very serious, implementable program to address this, uh, you know, uh, very important and very, very difficult uh, question. Uh, the second challenge is that, you know, we are here talking about uh, sustainable development. Sustainable development had three pillars, uh, socio-economic and environmental. And the problem is that, uh, you know, some people trying to break the balance between the three and concentrate on one and ignore the others. I think and we always believe that the most important uh, aspect or most important thread are pillars of this sustainable development, the socio and the economic part of it, because it's addressing the problems of the poor countries. So we have to maintain this, and if we don't maintain it, really this is a big challenge. And the, fourth, the third challenge is the political will. You know, we are here to make statement declarations here and there. And, you know, uh, from judging the past, you know, we have many declarations, many statements, different fora. But unfortunately, when you come to implementation, you didn't see that much of it, seeing the, the light. The, these are, there are many challenges, you know, uh, facing uh, the world here and there. Now, with regard to the role of development institutions, this as one of the stakeholders, this as one of the players. But the, 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 the main challenge uh, here is that to have other players doing their, their, their roles, you know, the public sectors, the civil societies, and the countries, the developing countries, the government is that creating the environmental, the, the, for investment and for the regulatory and to, to, for, for, for the, for this, uh, you know, uh, investment in electricity and in other projects to take place. So my next question, why then has an institution like OFID taken an active role in helping to alleviate energy poverty? Well, this is uh, the, because, you know, this is actually in the heart of our mandate, you know, we, we are created to actually to help uh, low-income countries, developing countries, especially low-income countries in their, you know, uh, different sectors, transportation, education, health, energy, etc. Just recently, for the last four years, we have been mandated by our uh, head of state to uh, work on eradicating energy poverty and the main reason we said that uh, we have repeatedly mentioned this that this is you know eradication of energy poverty unfortunately was missed when the uh, you know when 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 the uh, when the millennium development goals were formulated uh, and now uh, what is gratifying is that in, in here in Rio and in, in different fora now we are trying to actually bring back the uh, access, energy access or this thing which we say energy for the poor to be in the heart of this uh, Millennium Development Goals hopefully will, will become one of these uh, sustainable development goals. This is a part of our mandate and we are uh, putting it as a priority, it's becoming the flagship of OFID. But OFID alone cannot solve it, you know, you need more than 40 billion dollars a year to tackle this problem you know this is way beyond our capital and our resources what we are doing our best and by the way when we talk about OFID we talk about other institutions owned by our member countries